So today was a special directions hearing, not to do with an Australian constitutional matter, but to do with a Victorian Charter of uh, Human Rights uh, matter. The Victorian Human Rights Charter is something that everybody forgot since day one back in the Magistrates Court, where there were three unrepresented defendants who can't really be expected to know about the Human Rights Charter of Victoria and how Victoria is one of the only states that actually got one and tries to do something about the human rights of individuals uh, on top of uh, the implied constitutional right to free speech. So it starts to list what human rights are. And a problem with listing what human rights are is they they try to say nice things but then leave the hard, leave the hard questions, the same hard questions, to the court. So when the, uh, the human rights uh, provisions say that he's got the uh, right, an actual right and not an implied right to freedom of expression, an actual right and actual, uh, not an implied right to engage in, in, uh, in public life, Nobody actually knows what that means because another part of the Charter says that these rights can be uh, legislated down and watered down compared, uh, d depending on what the Parliament says. So all they do is put the hard question off and that's one of my issues always with the Charter of Human Rights. All it does is put the hard issues off the court. Everybody forgot about that and the unrepresented defendants didn't bring it up in the Magistrates Court, although perhaps the Crown Solicitor uh, and the legal office of the Crown Solicitor's Office should have known about it and should have raised it back in the Magistrates Court. Perhaps the Crown Solicitor's Office should have raised it uh, as soon as Mr Cottrell, when he was unrepresented, lodged his appeal in the County Court. Perhaps I should have taken it on board in, uh, when I lodged the, uh, the constitutional issue, but that's what I was focused on. Ultimately, the Victoria uh, Attorney General decided to be a party in the constitutional issue. That came first. And I think after they did that, uh, the lawyers in the uh, Victorian Government Solicitor must have started to review uh, the statutes for what they needed to do. And the uh, Charter of Human Rights actually says that if uh, a lawyer in involved in a case recognises that a human rights issue comes up, then they have to advise the court and the Equal Opportunity and Human Rights Commissioner. That's the important part, because the Equal Opportunities Commissioner is charged under the Act uh, with assisting as an independent uh, body in the developments of human rights in Victoria under the, under the Charter. So that's the reason why that body is notified, and the Victorian Government Solicitor notified itself uh, that's notified the Attorney General. I then looked at that and had a proper think or a rethink about that human rights issue because I had looked at it but I preferred the constitutional issue because in, with the constitutional issue the court can find the law is invalid and dismiss the charge there and then whereas going to the Supreme Court doesn't result in that. Going to the Supreme Court of Victoria for a declaration, all that does is uh, result in the Supreme Court making a declaration that the particular statute that Mr Cottrell is charged with is inconsistent with his human rights and therefore the two have to be read together somehow and that's what the Victorian Supreme Court is possibly going to be asked to do after Her Honour's decision today. She's reserving the decision for how long? For a week, week next Tuesday. Yeah. So this is exa that's exactly why you need a representative in the courts. Because trust me, people like you and me don't know what we're talking about most of the time in there. But uh, basically what this means is the appeal uh, is almost being split in two, or at least being postponed, because we want the Supreme Court, we want to defer to the Supreme Court and have the Supreme Court verify for us that my human rights have been violated because I was protesting a planning development outside a government building, protesting in essence a religious development. Now, the protest was perfectly normal, perfectly reasonable. The government is saying it wasn't reasonable. The government is saying it was illegal, specifically because I was protesting against a religion which uh, they, they've taken it upon themselves to defend exclusively. Uh, but John had them on the ropes today. Well and truly, they've uh, they've got a representative for the Attorney General that stood up against us. They've got uh, some other high-ranking law bureaucrat representing the state that stood up against us. Uh, but they were fumbling their words. They didn't know what to say. Uh, the judge could decide to defer to the Supreme Court. I hope that happens. She could decide not to. But either way, it is amusing to see how hard the state government has to work to try to keep me from moving in any direction whatsoever. Uh, so yeah, that's it guys. Uh, we'll be back here in a week and we'll give you an update from there.
Jeez. And the state attorney general decided to get involved in the last mention, but now they've conceded that there is this charter of human rights issue, so it seems like they've complicated the, the matter by getting involved. They've complicated it for themselves, I believe, yeah. But uh, I don't know if they expected uh, Mr Bolton to, uh, to make this submission. I don't, I don't know if they thought that he would pull this out of the works. Uh, they don't seem to have been thoroughly prepared for it. They seem to have scrapped together some sort of uh, some sort of effort to, 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 to convince the judge that it's not necessary in the last week or two, not even. So it's, uh, I think that's when did, you, when did you first, if not, uh, inform the prosecution of the state that you were making this application? I received a telephone call from the clerk of the court, Her Honour's clerk, uh, asking me uh, what my response was to the uh, Victorian Attorney General's notification uh, that there were constitutional, sorry, that there were human rights issues. I was surprised by that phone call because I'd never received it. It's the second time such a notification has gone to the wrong email address. The first time a notification uh, went to the wrong email address was when the Attorney General uh, advised the court that they were going to get involved. Uh, that went out by email at 3.30 and it was in the Melbourne main newspaper on Saturday morning and I knew nothing about it until I was told uh, when I arrived here for court on the Tuesday. On this second occasion, I received a phone call from the, uh, uh, the clerk of the court to say what's my response to the Victorian Attorney General's uh, statement that there is a human rights issue. And I said, what statement? Because again, I hadn't received it, even though it had gone out the previous week. So they are doing things step by step. And uh, ultimately, when I saw it and considered it, it's clear that Mr Cottrell does have human rights under the uh, Victorian Charter. It's also clear that the uh, Religious uh, Tolerance Act is set up so that people uh, can go about their business without uh, suffering undue ridicule. But what I put to the court today is let's say the other way around. How far can ridiculous things be asserted to be true just because someone believes in the supernatural? And why should that stop Mr Cottrell engaging in political discourse outside the local government office which is determining a planning application? Now remember guys, it's all political. From, from the two years ago when I was first charged, I've been banned permanently from posting anything or even having an account on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, I can't have a PayPal account. My bank account has closed my uh, my personal account down so I can't uh, raise any money to support myself in this matter or even to support myself as a regular citizen. What I'm trying to do now, what we're trying to do, what Mr Bolton's trying to do is prove that it's a human right to participate in political protest. It's a human right to protest a religion. It's a human right to protest the government. The fact that we need to do this I think is sad, but um, I'm hoping that it turns out in our favour. I think we've got a good justice system in this country. I'd like to think we have a good justice system. It's a fair justice system in my experience. So we'll see what happens.